how would you, in more of a reflective way, look at and look back at what your team's been able to accomplish? I know it's more than half, but this first portion of the season before the bye. Boy, that's a loaded question. Um, just with, I mean, it, we could go on and on about different things. You know, there was a lot of, I'm sure, questions about our team coming into this season. A lot of turnover, as has already been mentioned and documented through the course of the early part of the season in particular. And uh, I just think that, you know, we were able to do a good job, um, you know, adding some personnel and then coaches developing some of the, some of the young players who were, you know, onboarded early here. And, um, you know, we've kind of weathered the storm with some injuries, getting through some of that kind of chapter of the book to this point as well. And so it's kind of been all hands on deck, you know, team working as a team and um, everyone doing their part really. And how, how do you, or what do you attribute to the ability to, at every position on this team, seemingly go one, two, three deep on the depth chart. And for the most part, the level of play has maintained uh, as it would with, with some of the starters. Yeah. I would say it's never just one. It's never just one area. Like it's never just coaching. It's never just personnel. It's, it's really everything. And including, you know, personnel coaching, the players themselves, you know, wanting to get better, wanting to learn, wanting to put more time in. It's leadership from the players in the locker room of leading by example of, hey, we've got an injury. No one panics. Hey, put the time in. You're going to put the time in. You know, there's some um, accountability, I would say, across the locker room that way, which is important. Um, developing the players, these young guys and new guys onboarding them the right way with our development staff downstairs, our training room, our weight room. I mean, it's, again, it's never just one area, um, but it's it's definitely shared across across the organization. Appreciate it. Try to take some time off this week. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, Sean. John Worrell. Hi, John. Um, one thing I think well, we forgot to ask, how um, I, we saw that Josh Allen's hand was examined, uh, right hand was examined during the game. How did that hold up? Yeah, pretty good. I think we're going to get him a new one uh, over the mm. bye week here. We'll be <laughs> no. It's uh, as far as I know, I have not heard any uh, concern about it from Nate, our trainer, to this point, John. So uh, uh, hopefully, that's it remains that way. So uh, that's all I know right now. I I hear that. What what's the team? You know, getting healthier and 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 getting out of the bye week, and it looks like you're going to have a lot of guys returning. What does that do? How does that shape things up for the stretch run in knowing you're getting some valuable bodies back while also knowing you've had some youngsters gain some valuable playing experience? Yeah, I'll start with the experience part. That, that's been huge, right? You're getting a lot of guys, first year, second year players, a lot of valuable reps, um, and they're pushing through. And um, let's not forget the, some of these rookies have, haven't played this long without a break, right? So the, the length of this, the, uh, the, the run-up to the bio has been long, but um, I'm sure these guys are looking forward to getting some rest and kind of unplugging a little bit. But those, that experience that those players have gotten has been huge for us. Uh, we'll see in terms of who's healthy coming back off the bye. Um, you know, this week uh, – uh, the players that have been rehabbing are going to stay here and rehab and try and get themselves back to where they're an option for us next week. Um, we'll see where that goes. Don't really have any definitives at this point um, from Nate. Um, but if, and when they do come back, I think the important thing is that we, we continue to find our rhythm, right? When sometimes when you add a new piece back that hasn't played in some time, um, it can kind of get you out of out of rhythm a little bit. I think I mentioned that uh, right after the trade uh, earlier in the year here. So um, to this point, our team has done a phenomenal job of kind of working through that. Lastly, and and it, it addresses, I, I know you how much you called it not a statement and there's a long way to go still in the season, but how do you react when you hear or we hear, you know, Amari Cooper um, talk about the joy that that win brought out? Uh, from him saying it's something he's not experienced in a long time um, just to be in a game like that and to come out with a win. Well, Amari has been a great addition to our team. Um, you know, he's, he's kind of a, a quieter guy. So it's great to hear, you know, him uh, just express his gratitude, his 
uh, emotions, right. Of, of, uh, being able to be a part of a win like that. And, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, the, it's, uh, it's a win and, it, and it's an important win, right. It's in the AFC and against a really good football team. Um, so it's, I think that really speaks more to me than to about our culture and the environment, uh, that we have here in Buffalo than anything. Good. Um, enjoy the week. You too, John. Hey, Sean, um, in that um, first half uh, decision to challenge uh, the catch there, can you take me through the process a little bit? Because honestly, when I first saw it on the replay, it looked like it was super close. Then, of course, you get some of the clear replays. And I know you don't have the benefit of time always, but when that happens in a game and you don't get a challenge like that, how do you go back with everybody on your staff and evaluate the process for getting that right next time? Yeah, we've already discussed that. You guys know we've got John Perry, a great, great former referee on our staff. He's been a big help. And, um, you know, we, we looked at it as quickly as we could, and we weren't getting a lot of um, great angles on it, I would say. Um, they were not showing it on television. Uh, all we had was what was going on on our video board in the stadium there. So um, it was a backed up situation. And I think it was a second and long that led to a third and short. So um and in the first half didn't think it was um you know a big if we didn't get it right didn't think it was going to be have a big impact in the game so um based on the data we had at the time we challenged it I challenged it and obviously it didn't work out um but you know so we connected on that this morning and hey would we have done it again based on the information we had and and so you know it's all always just continue to grow and continue to learn and Again, those that's a timing issue there a little bit um, based on the views that we had. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, and then I know you probably want to temper any expectations for Matt Milano as he kind of ramps back up. But if you're looking at the big picture here from your seat, what what is the, what are the possibilities of adding him in late in the season, knowing that he hasn't really played in the game in over a year? <clears throat> no, that's uh, that's, you know, something that we've discussed um, we would want to do it if and when he were given the green light or he's given the green light, uh, go about it the right way. Um, so that's kind of a little bit what I was alluding to when we're adding a player back in. Um, so, uh, this is awesome, man. I feel like I'm right, right at home with you here. Great. Are those holiday decorations, by the way, already up. I love it. That's great. Yeah. yeah so we'll just, my wife, um, my wife took the weekend uh, all Sunday while I was down at the stadium, and she got the house decked out pretty good. I see that. I love the backdrop. It's great. <laughs> now, so Matt, we'll just I'll just be quick. We just we just have to be smart um, with Matt, and then making sure that, like as I mentioned before, we stay in rhythm here. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it. Enjoy your ride. You too. Matt, we can't hear you. No, can't we can't. Hear Matt. Well, we'll go to uh, Nick with the next question. Uh, Matt, let's get that. And Matt, you need to put up holiday decor. Everyone has to, you know, out, you know, out, out do Matt. We just had holiday decorations. We need, you have to, in order to get a chance to speak, you got to out do Matt uh, and his holiday decorations. New rule on Zoom. Well, uh, I'll have to take that up with the with the company there. <laughs> Go ahead, Nick. Um, so uh, going into the bye week, you, you guys have, I think you're 7-0 since you become the head coach coming out of the bye. Obviously, all those situations are different. But what is something that you and your staff do you think have been able to do to make you guys so successful after that week? Oh, boy. You know, if – if it was, if we knew exactly what it's been, Nick, I would say, Hey, we'll just make sure we do that. And, and then uh, go on from there. So um, I think it's a combination of things. I think a little bit of it is rest. I think a little bit of it is, um, you know, having a chance to uh, do some self scouting and evaluation of what we do and how we do things and fundamentals as well. Uh, I think the other part is, you know, making sure, you know, we put it, put together a good game plan for when the players return as well. So, it's probably not just one thing, but a multitude of things, really. Um, you've you've had a, a late by the last couple of years, and it seems like it came at the right time last year, and again this year with the amount of injuries you guys have. Is there a preference for you as a coach on on when you get the bye? 
uh, preferably after a win. Uh, so I don't have to sit here and think about a loss for, for a better part of two weeks. Uh, that's always one of my prayers. Uh, but no, it's, it seems every year to come just at the right time, you know, you're always pushing and, you, and kind of earlier in the year, you're like, man, it sure would be nice to have a buy. We're kind of, you know, banged up, whatever it is, or we're not, uh, that, you know, whatever it is, you're just kind of trying to get into your rhythm. And I think at this point, you know, it's been a long run up uh, for us here. And we've had a lot of kind of different primetime games and different game times and whatnot. So, um, you know, it always seems to come at the right time if you're able to push through. What are your expectations of players on a bye week? Obviously, it's a week to rest and reset, but at the same point, you've got you got some important business, you know, in a week. No, we do. Great, great question. Um, you know, what we talk about is making sure their habits match our goals, right, as a team, and, and certainly their goals as an individual to be the best version of themselves when they come back. Um, you know, we're getting into the back third of the season, if you will, and as you mentioned, it's important time for us here. And then just from yesterday, um, you guys did a, a really good job of keeping uh, Mahomes in the pocket. Um, you know, how much was that, the rush discipline, how much was that your coverage downfield that you were able to kind of, you know, keep him and make him think a little bit? Uh, probably a little bit of both. You know, I thought the, the defensive line did a really good job uh, early in the game, and then we had some third and longs doing the same thing. Um and then later in the game, as you saw, you know, he was trying to get out of the pocket. We had we had to spy on him a little bit there, too, sometimes. And, um, you know, that worked, um, I thought, well at times and maybe not so well at other times. So just something that we'll have to continue to evaluate, to evaluate as we move forward here. Thanks. Sure. Good afternoon, uh, Coach McDermott, George Radney, Challenger Community News. How are you doing this afternoon? Good, George. Always good to see you. Same here, especially after another win. Yes, indeed. And I was just wondering during the offseason, which you, for yourself as a head coach, saying how can you improve your coaching abilities as well as your overall team? I see one was with the referee, bringing in a referee on staff to help out with the with the with those challenges and things of that nature. And also, it seems like you you're a lot more aggressive this year than I've ever seen you before with the team. Seems like you guys don't hesitate to go for it on fourth and short or whatever it seems to be at the, if the timing's right is, was that some of the part of some of the goals that you set uh, for yourself this year? No, not necessarily. I think, I don't know the data exactly and what the analytics would say on my history or my, my resume as an, as an aggressive head coach, but I think I've been uh, towards the top um, really. So um, I think just sometimes when we get the results that everyone looks for, everyone wants, wants to, you know, kind of hover over that, but, I think if you look at my track record, I think we've been pretty, pretty aggressive. Every situation is a little bit different, but that's kind of my my nature is to be aggressive. Yeah, it seems like you're not calling timeouts to think about it and think you did, you guys are just going right into it. Whatever the play is called, boom, you're going up to the line, and uh, seems like everybody's all in, and they, you know, you just run the play. You know, you you know, you run that play, and you know, either you make it or you don't. It doesn't seem a, a, any type of hesitation this season. Well, I don't think we've hesitated too much in the past. There are some decisions if you have a timeout to burn that you'll use it just to uh, make sure you got the right play, make sure everyone's organized and, and ready to execute. So every situation is a little bit different. All right, last question for you. How, how would you rate the two guys uh, came in, Vandermark, that replaced uh, Spencer Brown, and also uh, the replacement for Deion Dawkins toward the end of the game as well? Yeah, Richard Garage there. So both both those guys, um, what, what more could you, could you ask for? You know, they came in ready to play, prepared all week. Um, you know, and Richard goes in in the fourth quarter and, um, you know, so he's, he's worked hard for the year and a half he's been with us roughly. And um, I, I don't know that there's uh, guys that work as hard. I mean, we have a ton of guys that work hard. Don't get me wrong, but those those two are towards the top for sure. Yes, I've seen those guys around for the past two years. Yeah, yeah. They, even after practice, I see them out there working yeah. on their footwork and things, especially last season. They were working at St. John Fisher a lot on their footwork. That's right. That's right, George. Yeah, footwork and all the technique that, that goes with playing online. All right. Thank you, Coach. Enjoy the weekend. We'll catch you next week. All right. Sounds good, George. Thank you. Hey, Sean, how you doing? You got me okay? I got you, Thad. Go ahead. Yeah. And with respect to the way you answered the question to John about how there's a whole bunch of different factors that go into a successful start, how much of it this year 
is guys internally improving? Because it seems like there's a number of players, both sides of the ball, and not even first or second year players that have taken notable steps forward that have been a part of this nine and two start. Yeah, it's been huge that it really has. And um, I mean, you could probably go across the roster, right, and and point out uh, a multitude of players who have improved their game last year, this year, uh, within the course of this season uh, as well. So just been extremely impressed by that. Risking uh, forcing you to toot your own horn here. How much of that success is because of the long-term culture that you've built up and the ability to have a similar message year after year? Does it make it easier then to find that extra one, two, five percent to make these guys a little bit better year to year? I think what goes with the continuity that you mentioned is really, you know, everyone knowing what's expected um, and that consistency around our building from the coaches, myself, to the personnel department and Brandon and training room, weight room, um, development staff, just all of us being on the same page with, hey, this is what's expected. This is uh, what we believe in and how it needs to go. Um, doesn't mean we don't change and, and we're not flexible. It just means that I think we're all in sync with uh, with with kind of that uh, that one single approach to doing things. And real quick, one of the players I want to point out specifically, Osiris Torrance, had a number of reps against Chris Jones yesterday. Seemed like he performed real well. How impressed were you with the way he you know held up in a pretty tough environment and a tough uh, assignment? No, you're right. That was huge. Uh, you know, Chris Jones is. I don't know, probably the Josh Allen of, of defensive linemen out there. I mean, he seems to, whenever he wants to make one of those super human plays, he makes them. And he, he tried to make a couple last night, made his fair share of plays, don't get me wrong. Uh, our guys battled, and, and each and every one of them, I mean, up front, he was lining up, you know, against people up all the way up and down the offensive line. I thought, thought those guys battled and did a good job. Appreciate it, Sean. Enjoy the buy, and, and we'll have the office decorated for next week for you too. Yeah, please. I was going to mention that. Let's get that. Let's get that worked out over the buy, please. AJ's working on it right now. We'll, we'll be all set for next week. <laughs> See it then. Okay, yep. Hey there, Sean. Thanks uh, for taking some time here. Um, I, I have a nutcracker. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm not sure. We have a football for decoration, but that's that's all we've got here. Um, yeah. To, I know Matt Milano was already asked about a little bit here. Um, what about Dwayne Carter? You know, I saw him out on the field pregame a little bit. You know, obviously he wasn't dressed to play at all. But how is his rehab coming along? And is he somebody that you're hoping in the not-too-distant future that you can have back in the lineup? He is, uh, Josh. You know, again, we'll, there's this pool of players that they're kind of tiered as to when we expect to get each one of them back. Um, again, this week, you know, being at, at kind of a rehab week for the players that are banged up, um, the message I'm getting from our training room is, hey, we'll let you know kind of how this week goes and then what that looks like for next week. So, you know, the challenge is not really knowing as we start to game plan a little bit towards the end of this week uh, who's available, but certainly understand that the trainers need some more time with these guys and you know, again, it's kind of like, hey, who, who are they going to hand us on Monday? Um, are we going to get one player, two players, more or less, what have you? So um, we just got to kind of take it one day at a time here. Um, big picture coming out of the game. Um, any any serious injuries? I know Taylor Rapp was dealing with a foot there. He said he was fine. He obviously came back in the game. Uh, any any significant injuries there that you're concerned with going into the bye? Right. Nate uh, updated us uh, kind of midday and no new additions, I would say, to the to the injury list at this point. OK, last one for me. Um, I don't know if you saw the video. Coach Cower was uh, out in the uh, out with the Bills Mafia pregame and decided it was a good idea to jump through a table. Um, <laughs> any any thoughts about Coach Cower um, jumping through tables uh, at Highmark Stadium? I love it. I love it. I had a chance to catch up with Coach. Uh, the night before the game. And, uh, you know, I think the world of him, what a, what a great coach, what a great man. Um, I think we think similarly in some, in a lot of areas, quite honestly. And um, for a coach to, to go out there and do that, I mean, that's kind of his element, right? This is, this, this is what makes Buffalo so special. People come here and they fall in love with this place. Right. And coach Cower, uh, all those guys that were on the show yesterday, I think they got a great taste of, of who we are and what we're all about here in Buffalo. Great stuff, Sean. I appreciate your time. Enjoy the bye week. I uh, hope you uh, get some time to to relax at least a little bit. Thanks. You too, Josh. 
coach Mookie Harkins, well for Sports 1080. I'm in the darkness. I can't give you my background just yet. It's all you know? good. It's all good, buddy. How you doing? Made, made me shut it down. I'm doing pretty good, coach. Uh, it is Victory Monday, but I want to talk about the luxury and the development of Dorian Wilms and how does that play into how you monitor uh, Matt Milano's return? Yeah, so Dorian's a young player that, um, you know, he he's learning, right, through the course of, um, you know, Matt's injuries here last year in this season. And um, he works extremely hard. He was wearing a couple of different hats for us, playing a couple couple of different positions last night in the game. And, um, you know, he continues to grow and um, he's just a, he's a good football player um, that as more as he gets more and more experience, he'll continue to develop. Absolutely, Coach. And I know uh, you love watching film, uh, you know, this morning and, and seeing both sides of the ball in those trenches, you know, go out there and perform. Could you talk about how your guys battled in the trenches on both sides? Yeah, I thought, you know, that's where really the game is won and won or lost, you know, that. And, um, you know, there was they won some. I thought we won some. So it was it was a good matchup inside on both both sides of the ball. Um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I thought we rushed the passer well. And we had them in some of those drop back one dimensional situations. And um, I thought our offense really our offensive line in particular did a really good job with all the different blitz games and blitz looks they get. Absolutely, Coach. And, man, you are basically flawless coming off the bye week. But, you know, it's a bye week, man. You know, so what, what, you got any particular plans to enjoy this 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 bye week this year? I uh, just try and get some rest, spend a little time with the family. Um, and I think that's about it. You know, just kick back, unplug a little bit. Absolutely, Coach. You definitely deserve it. Enjoy your bye week. Talk to you soon. Sounds good, Mook. Thanks. You too.